Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of How'd They Do That? I'm Mark Wallace. Well today on the show we have a photographer named Dano Watts and Dano is a true artist and you'll appreciate that when you see him. A couple of things happened today during our interview. We actually had some audio issues but we thought the things that Dano was sharing with us were so important that we just uh, are going to go with it. So you'll have to excuse some of the audio issues that we had during our taping today. But here's our interview with Dano Watts. Well, Dano, thanks for joining us today. First, we want to talk about uh, your, the style of photography that you do. Um, if you haven't noticed, Dano is the exact hair opposite of me. I love this, you know, kind of right. look going right. on there. But. I, uh, I actually uh, went to bed with a headache and uh, woke up with a beard. I just took some NyQuil. It just, so it just, just came out. just came out. That's <laughs> so what NyQuil does to you. So. Well, let's talk about the, the stuff you shoot. You shoot uh, fashion. You shoot... Fashion. You, you tell me. I, I shoot mostly fashion, editorial style stuff. Um, it, it's it's really laid back natural. I mm -hmm. use a lot of natural light. I use very little gear, um, and I just try to create more emotion um, with my photography. Um, mostly natural photography, mm -hmm. uh, natural light, very simple, stripped down. I use a window light, and a pretty girl, and a camera. That's all okay. that I use. So. And you're using a 50 millimeter prime. What, yeah, I use a 50 millimeter prime, 1.4. I shoot mm -hmm. Canon. Um, I'm not a Canon Nikon hater. Uh, I just picked up a Canon the first time. That's you what I hate shot both with. equally. Love both equally. Love them both equally. Uh, they all make good photos. So let's talk about some of the stuff that you've done. Because one of the things when we were looking uh, through your work, and I've known your work for years now, um, you're an artist. Some of the stuff that you do, it's right. uh, you're you're really. I don't know how to describe it. You're sort of laid back. Right. You're like, no. you know, this is, <laughs> this this is, is what I'm going to do. Right, right, right. And if it works, great. And if not, then, right. you know, who cares? Right, exactly. And so uh, how, how do you do that? I mean, it seems like you have to have a lot of self-confidence to be able to just say, this is what I'm doing and love it or hate it, but this is me. Yeah, I, it's taken me a long time, actually. Um, it's, I'm glad that... Uh, that the act is working because I, <laughs> I am not self-confident. No, I, it does come to a, a level of security with, with myself and where I'm at with my work. The, um, it started off, I started off photography four to five years ago and I started off thinking I had to buy all this gear. I had to buy mm -hmm. all these strobes and all these modifiers and all these lenses and multiple cameras and all this stuff. And, and um, it, it turned out that the work was horrible. I kept trying to emulate other people and it turned out to be just horrible. So um, I realized once I looked at the work and thought how horrible it was and how much pressure I put on myself that I was just insecure. I wanted to be someone else, not myself. Right. And I wanted to make money. Uh, it was just about money or copying <laughs> someone. It was never about, do I enjoy this? Um, so uh, a couple years ago, uh, life happened. Uh, just things in life uh, went really bad. And so I was able to reevaluate what I wanted to do with photography. And I realized that I want to do what I like, and what, and I don't really care what others like, and I'll just try it. And it turned out that uh, there was a good response. Uh, I not only got fulfillment for myself, but um, other people responded to it. So it was really cool. So how how close do you think your uh, personal life experience ties to your photography? I would say for me, it it, it ties in almost 100%. What you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. um, I make really crude jokes, uh, and at the same time, really, <laughs> really, <laughs> oh goodness, uh, check the blooper. Reel. I, uh, I make really crude jokes, but at the same time, I also can sit down and have a cup of coffee or a cup of hot tea and just be thoughtful and and talk about uh, philosophy or <laughs> joke. It doesn't really matter. Uh, all, I, kind of all of it, all of it's good. But I, I just think it all ties in. Just I, I saw too many people, and I still see too many people um, who try to be something. Uh, rather than just being themselves. And I think that doesn't work for me. It was too much work. I just want to be me. Take it or leave it, good or bad. Um, just take it. Uh, so you had a crazy experience. Things were bad and you're like, yeah, this is me. This is me. This is it. And I'm, I'm going to so. stop acting. I'm going to stop uh, portraying something. Um, I would rather be liked um, for who I am, <clears throat> um, exactly as I am, or hated for how I am, but just to be me. Um, and so I think they, they intertwine together that being able to just be myself helps me approach photography uh, and my work and the art a bit more because I think of it more from an, I guess, an artistic stance than so just So when you work. go into a shoot, how does that, how does that apply? You've got your, your gear and you're like, this is what I want to shoot. And if you get somebody saying, mm, not so sure, 
Is it is that mm. something you go, well, let's <coughs> rethink it, or do you just sort of say, mm. well, this is the way it is? Or it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a mixture. I would love to be able to still have um, a moment where I can just yell at a client and just say, <laughs> screw you. For you yeah. yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, just like, no, get out of here. I don't care. I'm an artist. I have um, those dreams as well. No, I, I never <laughs> I, I, have those no dreams. No dreams, no. <laughs> right. Um, but like, uh, I'd love to have those moments, but for the most part, it never gets to that point. Mm -hmm. um, because ahead of time with talking, I say, here's what I like, here's my work. I've been approached by other people who are like, we'd love to take, have you take photos of our product. I'm like, have you seen my work? Because it doesn't really line up. Right. And if we get to that point, it's here's my idea, here's the talking, it happens a lot beforehand, and they've seen my previous work. Um, a lot of my stuff is a little bit more edgier, a little bit more raw. Um, and so if they don't want that, uh, that should be said ahead of time. Um, but for the most part, if it comes to a shoot and I say, here's, here's what I want, I wanna just do something raw, natural, sometimes primal. Um, a lot of uh, artistic words like organic and airy, uh, those <laughs> words come up. Uh, makes me seem like a much more big deal than I am. Um, those words come up to try and describe a feeling and mood and then just go with it. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's talk about one of those sort of airy shots that yes, I love. Yes, let's, let's do it. And, uh, it's very it's, organic. Yeah, it's very organic. Right. So I love the shot. It's very shallow depth of field. Uh, the girl's hair is just sort of flying in the wind. It looks to me like film, mm -hmm. although I know it's not film. Yeah. And I love this soft color palette. So walk us through how you took that photo. Um, how did you get that, that airy, organic right. look? Well, <clears throat> what, the majority of my work is, uh, like I said, natural light. Unless it's for an editorial, um, even then, I'll, I'll do it uh, natural light. I don't like to use strobes as much anymore. Um, so it was just her in front of a window, and I had a a black sheet and I just asked her to move, like just whatever movements that the sheet would have, just move. And to try and once in a while find the connection with the camera and look back at me. And during the movement, um, was able to capture this shot. Um, I shot it with really wide open. Um, I think I had it like, the aperture was like two, I think. And my shutter speed was 1 40th of a second. My ISO was probably about three or 400. So it was really grainy. I like to shoot things that are just very grainy. and. Um, and that's and the movement. It, I was lucky. Uh, I was just lucky. Uh, I, I'd like to say it's some skill, some, but it was also uh, just a bit of luck, just happy accident, and was able to get it. It, it worked out really well. Um, and then some of the tones actually came from Lightroom. The majority of my work, I don't spend more than two minutes retouching. Yeah. Um, I like to have it be as natural as possible. Um, uh, so what do you do when you retouch? Is it? I mean, what specifically are you looking to do? Um, what I do for the most part, and also for this photo, was I just, I usually am always underexposed by like a third of a stop, and so I just up the exposure a third of a stop, usually add in a little bit of fill if needed to. Um, I like to take down the contrast just a little bit. I don't like to have as much contrast. Um, and then I like to put in a little bit of blue or purple into the shadows, but a tiny, tiny amount. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. I like to just leave it. I get rid of um, a little bit of uh, blemishes. But again, I like to keep wrinkles, and I like to keep blemishes, I like to keep the imperfections. I think the imperfections are, are the part that make it. Awesome. So. Um, well, let's talk about another uh, set that you did that I know was a lot of preparation mm -hmm. and planning, and it, you didn't get lucky, you actually right. um, you know, made this happen. And it's uh, uh, these shots where you have a model, and then next to it you have some technology that's been crushed. Right. And so the colors match, the feeling right. matches. So t walk us through how you went from concept to execution on that. Uh, I thought about how cool it would be how, um, to, to represent in fashion um, a style uh, of dressing with their choice of music delivery. And so I went from like an, an eight track, and I was thinking an eight track, and then a cassette tape, a CD, and an iPod, and I thought, oh, that's really cool. And then I thought, but what's cooler than that stuff is just breaking it. So I took all these <laughs> things and I, I broke them, uh, and I just smashed them, and I just put them on the ground, and I just smashed them all. And I went to Goodwill and Savers to find all these, and uh, to find the right color tones to match with it. And um, so then I just cast models, and. Was able to come up with a, a good array of everything. So, did you shoot the the smashed up stuff and then match the wardrobe to that first? Or uh, I matched the wardrobe to um, the the wardrobe came off the idea after buying all the items and crushing it. I was able to see the color palette and take mm -hmm. the photos. And I did those separately and just lit it with a harsh strobe right above, just bam, um, and was able to get the colors and see that. Then match the wardrobe to that gotcha. um, and pick the right person for the right era and made it work, so yeah. It's pretty darn cool. Thanks. I was very jealous when I saw this. It's like, oh, I wish I would have thought of that, <laughs> but I didn't, that. so I ripped it off. No, I didn't. That's totally fine, you can rip it off. <laughs> so you can rip, rip it off, off. totally fine. Um, well, you had another epiphany, uh, I think about a year ago, where you were trying to, you were doing some location scouting. Right. And you thought, you tell me. Okay, so I, um, I was out scouting with my girlfriend. We got lost, 
and uh, <laughs> I didn't want to admit it. So I, uh, I, I kept looking around, kept going down alleyways, and I saw this gorgeous place. I took a couple photos with the camera app, and then I got back home, and I put them all together in like a Word document, and I thought that was a lot of difficulty um, mm. for one location. So I looked in the app store and wanted to see if there was anything that would help with location scouting, and there wasn't. Um, before I was a photographer, I was a programmer, um, and uh, so I just taught myself Objective C and, <laughs> and, did, and it. did it. And uh, and so I just made it. And it's called Pocket Scout, and it's the uh, the only location scouting app for iPhone. And what it does is it allows you to go anywhere and quickly and easily um, create a new location uh, on your iPhone. You just take a photo, name it, hit save, and what it does is it grabs your location where you're at, that photo, it organizes it. Um, the time of day, which direction you are facing, your exact GPS coordinates, everything. And it shows a map. It just really organizes it. Yeah, it's perfect for location shooters. You can just go out and say, click, click, click. Or you can send an assistant out or exactly. whatever. So you get the photos <coughs> and the location, and then you can figure out how long it's going to take to get exactly. there. Exactly. And so it's it's really good. Um, and, you know, you uh, gave me a preview of right. this when you were developing it. And, right. you know, we used it and really enjoyed it. So it's good. Um, and, and still have it. I'm so. glad. I'm glad. Yeah, it's, it's, been, cool it's, been, it's been cool because I haven't. It's the Mark Wallace stamp of <laughs> Awesome. Well, then yeah. great. Well, it must have worked because <laughs> yeah. uh, last month I sold 10,000 copies. Wow. And I have done zero advertising. Um, so it's been nice. It's been really mm -hmm. cool. Like, I have told some friends and I've told some people about it. But for the most part, it's been word of mouth. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking at, like, analytics because I'm really nerdy. So I look <laughs> and see where people are coming from. And it, and it, it really is. Um, it's all over the world, and it's really crazy to see that something mm -hmm. I did was actually helping people and uh, getting emails, uh, frustrated ones, but then also ones where people really do appreciate it, and it's cool that they take time out just to say thanks. Awesome. But yeah, it's, it's a great app that's helped me personally. Um, that was the reason I made it, was I didn't care about other photographers, I didn't care about <laughs> anybody else. Something. I just needed something that worked for me, and so right. I made an app that worked for me, and I thought, I don't want to go back and like have to hodgepodge this together or duct tape it to make it work. I just want it to work. And so I, I built it for me, and it works great. It's on iPhone now. Um, it's going to be, uh, we're looking at Android. It just, uh, and when I say we, I just mean me and yeah. me. Uh, the team. The, the team, I sound more important when I say that. Uh, but I'm looking at bringing it to Android um, to, to allow the Android users to have that experience as well. But yeah, you can cool. check it out, pocketscoutapp.com. Awesome, well, Dan, we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. Thank you. And uh, congratulations on being the very first guest we've ever had to bleep. Awesome. Thanks so much. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You bet. Well, that's Dano Watts. We had a lot of fun, obviously, having him in the studio today. If you'd like to see more of Dano's work, please go to danowatts.com, and you can see uh, a lot of his photos and even some of the films that we weren't able to talk about. He does do some video work as well. So check out danowatts.com. Well, remember, if you have somebody that you'd like to see on how they do that, you can send your suggestion to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Okay. Uh, How many takes do you do? <clears throat> One. You know. The, uh, now I we saw just... a. Uh, <laughs> saw a um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be like, hey, I loved, uh, I loved some of your shots, man. I had a I had a talk with not Mark Wallace, and uh, <laughs> we noticed some similarities. <laughs> similarities is crazy. Your work. Uh, yeah, than anything else, this is really creepy to look at you like this. Doesn't person. it? Yeah, hey. I like, just like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> like we're like right here. Uh, my tendency is just to look down you and like just fumble with my feet and yeah. like pick Pretend my nose. It's not happening. Um, it's, it actually yeah. really really helps out. I'm sounding like an infomercial, but uh, <laughs> does it, it come with a knife set? <laughs> it should. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually really, really great, but it's uh, it's pocketscoutapp.com. Hi, Dan O'Mays here. For the <laughs>